how are you seeing a plenty of brands coming up in a specific niche if we talk about healthy f- snacking if you talk about skin care if you talk about beauty if you talk about xyz there are many hundreds of niches how do you look at many startups coming into one specific niche the intense competition how would they sustain what are what can be their strategies how are you looking the space evolving what is that their uh, thinking that they would sustain in 2014 when we started the people were telling us it's a very crowded category why does the world need yet another natural beauty brand they say the same thing even today uh, so i think uh, a big market will always be crowded because there is money to be made because there's consumer needs to be met i think what brands entering crowded categories today would have to do is they'll have to constantly keep chipping away at you know a market share from other brands or uh, you know the bigger companies or create new markets for themselves basically look at needs which are unmet i mean you were telling me that you use the 16 pack of lipsticks right there was a simple insight there that a single lipstick is never fully utilized you either lose it or somebody steals it or it gets melted in your car so if i give you 16 for the same price with 1/16th of the plastic in a single lipstick i think uh, that hypothesis kind of worked right so think about it it's like a very regular product like a lipstick there's no rocket science i mean of course the ingredients are ghee and sesame oil but as a consumer all you care about is the payoff right so but there was still a problem to be solved there right the portability of it you know similarly we've done something similar with eye shadows for example we don't do palettes we do little sticks so if you're even if you're in a crowded metro you can do your eye looks so in every category there will be certain unmet needs i think you just need to think consumer out you need to think of the consumer's journey what is he or she telling you where are they getting stuck and how can you solve for that as long as and d to c brands are very well positioned to do that because they don't have the baggage of legacy brands right they don't have the uh, you know no offense but the baggage of uh, you know your offline trade your distributors telling you yaar ye chalta hai ye bana lo matlab ab aadha time retailer aur distributor ki sunke maal bana rahe ho matlab that is absolutely incorrect right i mean if you are making toys the parents and the kids should be telling you what to, what is to be done and d2c allows you to do that so and that is a tool which brands should utilize is what i feel from this what i understand this it all boils down to innovation in every sense and given this given this innovative mindset there is a trend that bigger fmcgs are also kind of uh, looking at such innovative startups to add into their family or or tree right now abbas uh if i come to you for for your d2c journey given that it's pretty new what are some of the set of challenges that you are witnessing right now if i kind of push you to point out three the top difficult ones um so a big part of d2c if you just put down you know, if i want to do d2c then things like influencer marketing performance marketing you know all of this comes into picture right uh, posts and everything instagram linkedin whatever it is so uh, the problem is when we started it we wanted a good partner to work with and uh, we wanted somebody who understands the space would give us real good advice do the right things experiment and everything so we went with one of the top firms you know very reputed and everything and it really bombed for us like for uh, we paid a massive retainer for 6 months because everybody said at least 6 months you have to do it so um, what i realized is that even after shark tank i i made a mistake of mentioning on shark tank that our d2c is a little weak you know so because of that i think every digital marketing agency has seen that bite and they have approached us that you know take our services because we will make your d2c journey better so there are so many people it's it's really easy to get into d2c but it's really really difficult to master it because of this no there's a huge uh, thing that okay i just have to tick the boxes and my job is done but in d2c it's very different you know like arush everything he mentioned was absolutely on point that it is so important for you to look at your product and look at the customer what exactly is that pain point target that one pain point and push your product through according to that you know so that you it requires you to be really creative and it's very unique because first you have to be creative for your product now i think your communication has to be extremely creative uh so the product is i don't think it's very important because the experience will determine the next thing but i think for the first experience your communication is required to be very strong so one thing i got was that this communication or this vision cannot come from outside 
it has to be a part of your dna you understand the consumer uh, you design a product and then you push that communication to that customer so like he mentioned we were very much dependent on the distribution uh, distributor telling us what exactly needs to be done to make the retailer's life comfortable not the customer yeah. so just one small insight i'll give you you know the retailer wants a big box because when a customer walks in they want to you know they want to buy a big box it should look big for the birthday gift or something but today people don't have big houses you know and a big problem for them is that mere paas itne sare toys hai main rakhu kidhar you know my house is filled with it it's become like junk so we decided let's go small on our packaging you know let's make it more efficient and that distributors hated retailers hated they really boycotted us for a little while but customers really loved it you know consumers really loved it because they understood that problem they knew that this was a solution so that one thing even though it's not related to the toy it was like ha yeah it makes sense yeah back to arush point of unmet needs right you need to just spot where and what is needed right uh, now coming to you abhishek we we know that uh there was a, a scene of funding winter last year and um, given that the case you did raise some funding now going forward in your view what can we what can we expect specifically in d2c sector how will how will the funding flow impact or evolve so you know as last year also we have experienced it i think uh, many of us say there is a good funding winter available and you know there, there are no funds to you know get the right startups but as per our experience last year also uh, the liquidity is there you know the market has money and you just need to prove your unit economics right so in duty d2c space specifically when the people are there to fund you you just need to have the unit economics right which you have promised say 5 years back now this is the time to you know just prove it and get it right and from uh, specifically from d2c perspective again i think in last uh, again after 2 3 years we can expect good ipo businesses now this is what we have been talking to a lot of founders which have scaled up businesses about 400 500 crores many of them are now just figuring out how to make their business ipable so how they figure out you know they have a good financial strength internally and they are the goal is to you know get it public and get the right valuations from the market instead of you know getting it through vc space that means is what we can expect in coming 2 3 years specifically from the businesses which have scaled more than 400 crores 400 500 crores this is what we keep hearing from so in last year technology as a space got lesser funding than d2c as a sector uh now my point to you arush if he mentioned about a lot of milestones in one go for a startup if we're looking at funding we have pre seed then seed series a b c d e f g i don't know how many lenskart last year raised series j round yeah and that was the hugest as in the largest funding amount they raised any d2c company raised last year lenskart was the one series j so these were some of the milestones that helps you grow right but for a d2c startup how would you how would you establish an ideal milestone what is an ideal milestone for a d2c startup in terms of scale or in terms of how many how much funds you raise in terms of in terms of the absolute success is is getting acquired by a large fmcg you asked me the most uh, difficult question right that's and the right that's my job so it's it's it, it's kind of philosophical in a way right i mean <laughs> try to be least philosophical but i genuinely want to understand what would be the ideal milestone for a d2c startup that's starting today no i think uh, if, if you think about i can talk about beauty right i think in beauty uh you build a 100 crore revenue 200 100 to 200 crore revenue is a pretty sizable business in my opinion uh there are many takers for it sometimes when you are over capitalized uh that is also it causes indigestion your system rejects it and then you know you see you see around you what's happening yeah. and as far as the funding winter bit is concerned i think uh, it's beyond your control you don't control that what you control is your own cash flow and i think the best best deals are struck when you don't need money right uh so i think for startup founders i think it's important to be in that position always where you don't need outside money your company has cash flow positive cash flow uh i know it's hard to achieve but i think that is what if i would advise somebody that is what i would uh, advise them because that is what i have learned in my journey right uh and there is no right scale and all that i think uh you, you're running a business which is sizable uh you are positive bottom line is positive 
you, that's a good business according to me right now it it depends on the other the other side you know so a lot of times founders are made to believe that you are subscale and all that that's because your fund size is too big that's not my problem right creating the unicorn is your issue not mine you had you had a 250 crore fund you would have loved me but because you've raised 1400 crores in your fund you need your companies to become unicorns to return money to your lps because you borrowed extra money doesn't mean that my ambitions will change so founders need to understand that and then work with the right partners who value it you know, so for in our case we work with marico which is a traditional fmcg company throws free cash uh, you know every every year right uh, and uh, values profitability values uh, businesses which are built sustainably for the long run right uh, so we found the right partners in de in them so it's basically different horses for different courses here yeah? so uh, it has to be the right match anything you would like to add abhishek uh, for us when we you know, speak about our category uh, when we say you know what success mean for us i think is to get the right customer love uh, for your products uh, keep you know targeting them with right communication they should resonate with the proposition you have taken from the insights if the customers keep loving your products and keep buying them without you targeting them with a lot of marketing i think that's where you have corrected and you know the customers are just loving your products just loving your brand for the way you have built it and for the proposition you are you know keep giving to them what's your what what's your vision becoming becoming a unicorn doing an ipo what's your vision yeah so for us it's you know very clear so we want to do ipo uh, within 4 years uh, we are currently doing about 300 crores of business uh, once and we are profitable so the idea is to scale business sustainability from here and get the ipo the first indian healthy snacking brand to do ipo in india That's seems good arush arush kind of applaud mm -hmm. uh, you and your growth numbers uh, want to add to this first and then tell us about what are your future plans and how do you look at your grand vision about your d2c journey so uh, my my views on the funding winter so i have not raised i'm completely bootstra bootstrapped so uh, i can talk out of my hat also over here so i'm going to do that i think that <laughs> it's not the worst thing the funding winter because it didn't mean that people who really deserved money didn't get money mm. you know mm. I look at it as uh, today also when I'm thinking of raising money, I'm thinking uh, I really don't want an unrealistic valuation. Like there was, I think two years back when we just started out, we were thinking that, yeah, let's push our valuation to as much as we can get, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, now at this point we have this realization that what that does is it creates unreal expectations of growth also. And that is something I don't want to live with because it will make me do stupid things. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to do stupid things. Huh? Sorry. <laughs> it probably, I mean, what will I do with all those brands that I'm not really passionate about, right? But I have to do it. I have to do yeah. something about it. So I think that that is uh, my perspective on the uh, funding winter, that if you're really good, if you're sustainable, and if you can pass on that message to the investor, the investor will see it and they will fund. I mean, that's what's happening to us right now also. We are getting good interest from people who are understanding the dynamics of the entire industry before directly jumping into not miss an opportunity or something like that. I forgot the second part of your question. What are your, f what are your growth Future plans? Plan. Yeah. So very honestly, it's not, I, I uh, uh, every morning I can get up with a different 10 year plan. Um, 10 year plan is a huge one. Yeah, I can, I come up with a different 5 year plan also because uh, in the last 2 years I've made about 6 5 year plans, right? 3 year 5 year pro projections. So every 2 I, months... Things I love the honesty. Uh, it, it, so when an investor is asking for, your, for a 5 year plan, no, I, I think he also knows that I'm making it up right now because <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, but it does give an idea of what direction I would be taking with the information that I have today. So with that knowledge, if they are understanding that that is an understanding, I think that is good clarity to have. So I don't have a five year, what exactly I see as my exit right now. Uh, I'm not in one of the really fast moving industries. The largest companies in India in toys must be about 100, 200 crore in revenue. So it's not such a big industry in India, but uh, we have built a product that is uh, international, that is uh, worldwide usable, tested for quality, passes all uh, European and American standards. Because we see that India is not only going to be a market, international is going to be a market. And India is going to appreciate that because Indians love international brands as well. I mean, they're, they're realizing that there is uh, a lot of work to be done to succeed in 
many competitive markets also. So if you are successful over there and you work towards that, you will automatically create a great product. Before we actually close with two quick questions, my question to all of you, or first, firstly to Arush is, uh, there is a one trendy problem in D2C is CAC, managing CAC. So customer acquisition cost is always high, mostly. Most of the time it's always high. Now there is another cost which is absolutely zero, losing a customer. Because in a highly competitive space, be it beauty, skin care, healthy snacking, home decor, X, Y, Z. If I were to buy a sunscreen, if I'm, I'm, not, I'm not finding it on uh, one platform or, or specific brand sunscreen, I'll go to switch to another one. I, if I'm not finding fixed derma, I'll switch to Mama Earth or Dermaco, anyone. Now I have plenty of options, right? There is abundance. How do you entertain a customer who is disloyal? I mean, we don't, right? The I most, mean. the most obvious, uh, or or the most good example, the ideal example to this situation, which can be resonated with all of you, can be Swiggy and Blink, uh, Swiggy and Zomato. If you f if you cannot find one dish on Swiggy, you switch on to Zomato, or or vice versa. So I think, uh, assuming that, let's say you have 100 customers come to your website and all 100 are going to come shop the next month, I mean that would be foolhardy to think, right? There will always be lapses, right, in any, in any, any business. So it's all you can do is basically minimize that. And I think uh, the answer is quite boring. Uh, the answer is to make very, very, very solid products. Because we have customers who tell us your website is not working. We used to have a very, very bad website before we moved to Shopify four, four five years ago. It never used to work. We used to get calls from customers, Aapki site nahi jaldri, mera ye address hai, please shampoo bhejwa do, matlab. Because that, that, that tells me that at least we are doing something right, at least the product is solid. And I think that those, that cohort of customers still buys from us. They, they give us gullies, uh, ki aapke delivery nahi thi, courier aaya, chale gaya, aap Amazon se sikhi hai, and we just nod our heads but and say. But product wohi chahiye. And we, and, and we nod our heads and say, sorry ma'am, like, you know. And uh, that is how it works. So, product solid chahiye. And secondly, if your product is solid, then the product should be something like that it spread from word of mouth. Kare. Like the 16 pack that I'm talking about had that quality in it, right? There are the eyeshadow lid sticks had that quality on it where people talk about it, right? I mean, yaar, uh, I mean, fortunately for us, we cater to women and women talk about stuff they shop for unlike men. So uh, in categories where that happens, I think uh, that is your secret weapon, right? Make the product so viral worthy of being talked about that your marketing happens for free, right? So then you, then your CACs will come down automatically, right? On that particular product, our CACs are very, very low. Um, so yeah, so these are the two things I think. And now how to do this will depend on what business you are in, what categories you are in. And again, toys will do it in a different way. Snacking will do it in a different way. So, but these are the two frameworks I think, uh, I believe should work. In addition to uh, rising CAC, there is another uh, tedious process and also high commissions of being listed on quick commerce. I read a huge long post where, wherein a, a, a founder uh, kind of expressed his story of, of struggle of being uh, listed on Blinkit. You want to say something to this, Abhishek? No, I think everyone here, all the to startups have faced it. All the quick commerce when they came in, the idea was to charge from the D2C because the traditional brands never gave their margins. The Will this commission come down? Yeah, yeah, as your brand scale up, as your brand love gets generated, you have a pull demand on the platforms, you can command that thing from them. And once you have that story with one of the platforms, you can replicate it. For example, we started with 35% on Blinkit and we scaled up pretty fast. Then we bought down to 30%. When the Blinkit got to 30%, Zepto and Instamer automatically go down to 25%. So the, there has to be pull on the platform. You have to be scaling up there. They should see that, you know, yeah. instead of having higher margins, if I have a higher volume of that brand on my platform, the absolute margin is going to make more sense. This is how you, you know, maintain the interest of all the category managers on the platform, is that you grow very fast for them. Is that what they are looking for? Abbas, now in my understanding, I really do not see a very strong brand presence of any any toy company per se, yeah, uh, on a startup level in India per se. How would you ensure a customer would reach Blix? Uh, 
so two things right how do they reach blix and how do they stay with blix or mm. they get associated mm. with blix so reach is through any sort of media or something or some way you know to get an exposure out but more important is how do you get that customer in in our opinion in our industry in my business at least it's how do you get that customer to become a user of our product starting today then you know two months later again by i mean that's ex that's eventually what we all want right uh, so for that i think um, uh, like you said people are not loyal anymore towards any brand or something particularly but if then there are lots of factors i think that are associated but one of those factors i think is that they have to be able to associate with the brand uh, beyond just the product you know they have to talk to their friends and all about the brand as these guys are doing something interesting you know i've seen this i've the, the personality of the brand you now should be so strong that it it's very clear it's, the brand is like a person you know so you have to bring that personality of that brand out and everybody like um, my my brother in law recently wanted to buy a motorcycle so he went to the triumph showroom and he saw the motorcycles and then he went to a harley davidson showroom so in harley davidson you know, there was this big blackboard and there are all these dates and events written you know and what i realized was in triumph you no know, you buy a bike you know in harley davidson you no know, you buy a community you get a part of a community so that i think was um, uh, very interesting for me and i think i've taken lots of learning from that because that 12 lakh or 10 lakh or 8 lakh or whatever you are spending on the bike is one part of it the other part of it is that uh, how, what am what else am i getting along with it right and becoming a part of a community creating a social circle around it having events around it all of that no will never let that core audience ever leave you and you don't need every customer of yours to be that core audience but you need enough so that they start influencing everybody else to try out that experience because it's such a great experience for them in last 30 seconds i want to come to everyone uh, just tell me any one startup founder or a product which you admire in d2c space in india so i think chaios has done it really well uh, to you know establish that communication with the customers through an ebu like a d2c channel i think really admire the way they came up with the points thing to you know you have a free chai when you collect enough free points and then you can customize it you know works really well for from the customer love perspective and you know just getting associated with the brand so i think Good one, really really i am uh, i'm not a I, i wasn't ever a shopper for clothes online i mean you started using a brand called andaman now i think i love their clothes uh, it's a, it's a classic case of you know lousy website but great product so when that happens i know they're on to something great so love the you quality of those well clothes huh? absolutely <laughs> when the, the brand that they creating they creating a lifestyle around it the quality is top notch they charge you a premium but then they give you that quality and i think that's an example of a legitimate brand being created online you know typical old school huh? um, i think in the education industry which we target quite a bit i think physics wala is somebody who's done an incredible job because i don't think he started off also thinking that he's going to make youtube videos and be worth so many you know a billion or whatever it is so i think that uh, one man with one camera and not great editing or something no perfection he just gave something that was so powerful he identified his skill he he was able to maximize it without all the shosha of it and he's Uh, beaten all the biggies in the tech. lovely lovely interesting there's so much to learn from these amazing founders including all three of you thank you so much for making time for this thank you so much